Have you ever wondered how some of the largest companies in the world keep their data safe from cyber criminals? It's a constant game of cat and mouse. One side building walls, the other trying to knock them down. And in cybersecurity, this thrilling dynamic is played out by the blue team and the red team. Hi, I'm Luke. And today we're diving into the world of cybersecurity to unravel what these two teams do, how they operate, and why they're crucial to keeping us safe in the digital age. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what it means to defend as part of the blue team or attack like the red team. Now stick around to the end so you know exactly both these teams do. And remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you never miss any new content. Let's get started. To understand blue teams and red teams, think of cybersecurity like a fortress. The blue team are the guardians of the castle, while the red team are the ones that are tasked with finding every possible way to break in it. So let's start today with the blue team. Now they are the defenders. Their mission is to proactively protect an organization's information systems and ensure that the network is resilient against attacks. The blue team performs several key roles such as 1. Monitoring and detection First, they handle monitoring and detection. Blue teams are constantly watching networks, systems and applications. Any signs at all of suspicious activity. They use tools like security, information and event management. Systems to gather and analyse data from all over the organisation. It's like keeping a watchful eye on every corner of the digital castle. 2. Incident response Incident response is critical. When something looks out of place, the blue team jumps into action. They investigate potential threats, determine what's happening and take action to contain and eliminate the threat. Every incident is documented meticulously to learn for the future. 3. System hardening. This is another crucial aspect. The blue team constantly strengthens the organization's defenses, patching vulnerabilities, updating firewalls and configuring network devices to minimize those risks. Their ultimate goal is to make the organization's systems as tough as possible to crack. 4. You have risk assessments and vulnerability management. The blue team is always looking for potential weaknesses before the bad guys do. They conduct vulnerability scans, they conduct penetration tests, and they prioritize steps to mitigate any risks they find. 5. Policy implementation and user training. It's often said that people are the weakest link in cybersecurity. The blue team works hard to ensure that every single employee understands best practices and how to recognize phishing attempts, what not to click on, and how to stay secure. They set security policies and run testing to reinforce these lessons. So in short, the blue team does everything they can to keep the attackers out. They build the walls, they secure the doors, and they teach everyone inside how to stay safe. Okay, now let's switch sides and talk about the red team. Now these folks are the offensive experts. They're the ones tasked with finding weaknesses before malicious attackers do. The red team focuses on offensive operations, simulating attacks to find the exploit vulnerabilities. Their work is creative, it's adaptive, and often aggressive. So let's break down their main activities. Activities. One, ethical hacking. Ethical hacking is at the heart of what the red team does. They act like real attackers, using the same tools and tactics that malicious hackers might use. This includes phishing campaigns, social engineering to trick people into revealing sensitive information, and exploiting known system vulnerabilities to gain access. Two, penetration testing. Now this is the bread and butter of the red team. They attempt to breach the systems by any means possible. Unlike automated tools that might run vulnerability scans, red teamers use their creativity and deep technical knowledge to go through defensives that automated systems might overlook. Three, post-exploitation analysis. So after a successful breach, they conduct post-exploitation analysis. So this means evaluating the extent of the access they have achieved, what data they could have stolen, what systems they could have taken over, and ultimately what kind of damage they could do if they were a real attacker. Four, adversary simulation. The red team often performs this, mimicking the tactics of real-world adversaries, such as Advanced Persistent Threats, APTs. These prolonged, sophisticated attacks are designed to see if they can get persistent access to a network without being detected, much like a skilled spy trying to go unnoticed. And five, reporting and improvement. So once they've done their job, they move into reporting and improvement. The red team documents everything they found, every vulnerability they exploited, and every backdoor they managed to open. This report goes to the blue team, who uses it to improve defenses, patching the holes and building stronger security. It's this collaboration that keeps the organization one step ahead of real cyber criminals. So let's look at the relationship between the blue and the red teams. So are these teams always at odds with each other? Not really. In fact, it's quite the opposite. They're like sparring partners, each making the other stronger. The red team attacks, 
the blue team defends and learns. And together, they help secure the organization's systems. So let's look at red team versus blue team engagements. Well, these are simulations designed to test an organization's resilience. It's a never ending loop of testing, defending, learning and improving. End result is a much more resilient system that can handle even sophisticated attacks. The red team writes a detailed report on how they broke in and the blue team uses it to build a stronger defense. It's a partnership that ensures the organization is constantly improving. So let's now look at a day in the life of a blue team member. They start by checking the latest alerts, looking for anything that might indicate suspicious activity. Imagine staring at multiple dashboards filled with logs and network data. Blue team members must investigate any anomalies they find patch vulnerabilities, update firewalls, and keep everything as secure as possible. They're the ones strengthening the walls and making sure that that alarm is ready to go off. Day in the life in the red team. Their day is all about getting creative. They might start by analyzing their target, looking for weak points in outdated software, misconfigurations, or even employee behaviors that could be exploited. Red teamers could be running a phishing campaign one day or deploying a complex adversary simulation the next. Every breach they manage to pull off provides insights on how the defenses can be strengthened. So looking at career paths, which team is right for you? Well, if you're thinking about a career in cybersecurity, the choice between the blue team and the red team depends on your interests and skills. Do you love puzzles, organization, and building strong defensives? And if that's the case, the blue team might be right for you. Or maybe you're curious, a little mischievous, and love figuring out how things can be broken. If that's you, then the red team could be a perfect fit. Either way, both teams are crucial to keeping organizations safe. So moving on, why do they matter? You might be wondering, why do we need both blue teams and red teams? Why not just focus on defending systems? Well, the truth is that cybersecurity threats are constantly evolving. Attackers are always developing new methods to get past defenses, and this will always be the case. To stay ahead, organizations need both sides. They need defenders who are constantly refining their strategies, and they need attackers who think like the adversary. The red team finds the weak spots and the blue team patches them, making the system stronger over time. It's a bit like martial arts training. You can only get better by sparring with someone who knows how to push your limits and expose your weaknesses. This constant back and forth makes organizations more resilient and able to handle even sophisticated attacks. So whether you see yourself as a defender on the blue team, safeguarding systems and ensuring resilience, or an ethical hacker on the red team. Testing those defenses and finding weaknesses, there's a place for you in cybersecurity. This ongoing battle between offense and defense is what keeps our digital life secure, from the bank transactions we make to the messages we send and the data we store. If you found this video helpful and you want to dive deeper into cybersecurity careers, be sure to check out my other videos where I go into skills, certifications, and pathways to becoming a blue team or a red team member. And of course, if this video clarified your career path or you learned something new, hit that like button and subscribe and let me know in the comments below, are you a red team member or a blue team member? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you want to know how to get a job in cybersecurity, then click the link here.